Today we are looking at the reason why the Republic of Guinea has a long history of coup d'etats. Coups don't just happen overnight. There might be a combination of things that put together to propel a coup in some of those African countries. And I will be able to analyze to you five reasons which led to the reason why Guinea is found itself in the situation that it is today. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. On September 5th, officer of an elite special force army unit overthrew 83-year-old Guinean president Alpha Conde in a coup. The nation of 13 million people is now under the control of junta leader Colonel Mamadou Dembouya, who has dissolved the government and also made a series of pronouncements. This includes an assurance of calm to vital mining sector. The coup was greeted by celebrations on the streets of Guinea at the time. It has also received the backing of opposition leader called Selu Delum Dialu. But there is also a lot of uncertainty as to what happens in Guinea next as we all are watching. In this episode, there are a number of things that could combine to propel this coup. Looking at that, because Guineans were very prostrated with the Conde's presidency, but their frustration actually went beyond the expectation of the Guinean people and the people within the West African region. Conde became president in 2010 in what was widely regarded as Guinea's first democratic presidential election. The election was not itself without problems, including allegations of fraud, episodes of violence. A long-time political opposition party leader, Conde had spent decades exiled in France and had even served part of a prison term in Guinea, accused probably falsely at the time of trying to overthrow the government. When Conde was elected, infrastructure was poor, running water and electricity were scarce, roads were poorly maintained, and schools and hospitals were under-resourced. Employment opportunities were few, and those that paid a living wage were almost non-existent. Police and military forces reputedly extracted bribes from the population rather than protecting it. Political dissidents met with violence. In looking at this, Conde has pledged to boost the economy and bring much-needed improvement to the nation's uh, infrastructure. But the results were mixed. Large-scale mining projects have failed to benefit more citizens. A dam intended to expand access to electricity has displaced thousands of people, and political dissidents has continued to be repressed. A common critique of the government is that little has been accomplished since independence. Still. Conde was re-elected in 2015, and instead of leaving office at the end of his second term in 2020, he held referendum on a new constitution in 2019. Resetting the clock on his two-term limit, he ran for and also won a third term in 2020. From 2019 to 2020, Guinea security forces responded to popular demonstration against uh, the referendum and controversial elections with letter violence killing scores of civilians and wounding many more. Protesters and opposition leaders were also arrested in large numbers. Looking at this, another very important thing that also combined to driving the coup in Guinea was also despite the celebrations in the street, uh, there was also a fear with regards to the military because Guinea has been in this situation before. Videos of Guinean dancing in the streets and cheering on picking trucks full of soldiers parade to the Conakry capital has made rounds on social media at the time. But Guineans have experienced military rule before and they knew the consequences can be dangerous. When President Sekou Toure died in office in 1984, a group of army officers staged a coup d'etat. Their leader was Colonel Lasana Conte who declared himself president and remained in office until he died in 2008. The latter years of Conte rule saw multiple instances of military violence against civilians, most notoriously during the series of population demonstrations in 2007. As soon as Conde died, a yet another junta took power. This one was led by Captain Musa Dadi Kamara. Daddy was initially popular for his public condemnation of the Conte administration abuses, but he began to lose support when he hinted that he intended to remain in power. In looking at this, when political opposition party led organized by a rally in Conakry National Stadium to protest the junta's continuous hold on the presidency, soldiers barricaded the stadium and fired into the crowd, killing at least 150 people 
and brutally raping dozens of women at the time. Daddy was removed from power and multiple military international actors collaborated to organize the democratic transition of 2010 in which Conde was elected as president. If you are new to our channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. And the third thing that we are looking at here is that Guinea is rich in resources, but that hasn't helped the many of the Guinean people. So the point that Guinean economy is built on its mineral world. It has one of the world's known reserve of bauxite and iron ore to produce alumina, aluminium. The country has also significant deposit of iron ore. The economic uncertainty following the coup has led to spikes in bauxite and aluminium prices on global markets. Conde made the mining sector a high priority and Guinean bauxite production increased massively during his presidency. But while mining accounts for some third of the nation's economy, most Guineans haven't benefited from it. Instead, many have experienced its impact on land and water actively harmful to their agrarian livelihood. Another very important thing is that Guinean's ethically and linguistically diverse country, the new leader seeks to manipulate those differences, have to tread those lines carefully. One of the legacies of Guinean post-independent socialist period were that the government emphasized national unity above all, and that Guinea were hesitant to prioritize ethnic identity over national identity. Guinea's ethnic groups are complex and includes a pure people, also known as the Fube, the Malinke, also known as Maninka, the Susu, and the Forester people. Forestia is a collective term referring to members of many smaller ethnic group, uh, groups in Guinea, from the also looking at those different regions. However, uh, this shifted significantly uh, in around 2010 presidential elections when Conde, who was from the Malinke group, was uh, pitted against uh, Selu uh, Dilian Diallo and Pelu. In looking at this, the population split its allegiance between the two candidates and also along ethical deviance boundaries. Conde's repeated vowed, uh, victories over Diallo at the pools in 2015 and 2020 resulted in the polarization between the two parties, which rely on ethically conservative basis. This ethnically diverse country may spur another level of violence, so this current president, Colonel Dombuya, seems for a moment to have to attract the support of Guineans across ethnic uh, backgrounds. He has not framed the military takeover in ethnic terms, speaking instead of carrying out the will of the people. But as events unfold, he and other figures in the military, where Fube are under represent, they try to play an ethnic loyalty and differences to consolidate their power. Leading political opposition figures may do the same, given the opportunity. Guinea has never had uh, a war, so the point out, which is another very important thing, but the people have endured uh, tumultuous times and more many uh, imminent ahead if things are not put in order. Guinea has never had a war, though it has many of the common predictors for one. This includes conflicts in neighboring countries, severe poverty, ethnically polarized politics, and also history of uh, oppressive governments. In looking at this, conflict in Guinea would have dire effect on West African region, but the events in the country continues to avoid war so far. Guineans may well find themselves in increasingly tenuous positions during the current military takeover and the future transition to a civilian government. We all are looking at how Guinea is going to navigate these particular things and which has affected the country in several ways. However, the world is watching and also the people of Africa are looking at how the current leader should navigate and also put the country to the part of the transition and the smooth transition actually to bringing Guinea out of this particular situation. The people of Guinea have suffered over the years and hopefully that Guinea will come out strong from this and also go back to a better democratic principle and to give back the country to the people of Guinea. I want to thank you for watching. Are you from Guinea? Let us know what your thoughts are. And if you have worked or do business in Guinea, let us know what are the things you think are very important in this situation. And what are some of the challenges that are currently now in Guinea? And what are the hopes you people think that the new leader in Guinea 
will go ahead in bringing a better transition and give Guinea back to the people of the Republic of Guinea. I want to thank you for watching this explorer. Hopefully you can watch some of our informative video on our YouTube channel. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.